Although it's not uncommon for pilots to witness UFOs, the sightings of Japan Airlines Flight 1628 are remarkable for involving a prolonged and dramatic close encounter that was corroborated by multiple radar systems. The sightings, which spanned more than 40 minutes in total, quickly attracted media and government interest. The resulting FAA investigation unearthed a wealth of solid evidence, including extensive radar data and radio transcripts that documents official handling of the situation. These documents offer a revealing look into the way that UFO reports are processed by airline officials and exposes the ongoing interest of some of the most clandestine parties within the U.S. government. On November 17, 1986, a Boeing 747 cargo freighter with Japan Airlines was flying over Alaska en route to Narita, Tokyo. The pilot was Captain Kenju Terauchi, an ex-fighter pilot with more than 10,000 hours of flying experience. With him were co-pilot Takanori Tamufuji and flight engineer Yoshio Tsukuba. After entering Alaskan airspace shortly after 5 p.m., Captain Terauchi noticed two lights in the distance keeping pace with the plane, so that they appeared to be standing still from inside the cockpit. Tamafuji radioed in to Anchorage Air Center in Alaska to ask if there were any aircraft in the area. They said that there were not. After another 7 to 10 minutes, the objects darted in front of the plane. Though Terauchi called them craft, he saw only two dark vertical bars intersecting five rows of circular sources of brilliant whitish amber light. Terauchi could feel their radiant heat from inside the cockpit. He compared the size of each object to that of a DC-8 jet. The objects remained in perfect formation with one another and undulated in unison. At one point, they switched from a stacked to a side-by-side -side position. The crew tried reporting the object's maneuvers to the Anchorage Air Center, but their communication systems failed until the UFOs moved farther away. Tsukuba picked up the objects on the plane's weather radar system and watched for roughly 10 minutes as the target's movements corresponded perfectly with the crew's visual observations. About five minutes after the objects first appeared in front of the cockpit, they suddenly darted off. At this point, Terauchi saw two pale white lights farther away on the horizon, which he assumed to be the same objects. The lights appeared to be horizontally elongated and anchored to a larger object that Terauchi called the Mothership. The large object was silhouetted against the dark eastern sky, however, and Terauchi could not distinguish its features, only that it was walnut-shaped with a wide rim around the circumference. The apparent object once again showed up on the flight crew's radar, and an operator at Elmendorf Air Force Base picked up an uncorrelated target in the plane's vicinity. The operator watched the target move around Flight 1628 at the exact time and in the exact same manner that Terauchi described while viewing the object in person. The radar operator in Anchorage also picked up the target at certain points in the sighting. The FAA control tower requested that Terauchi perform a 360-degree turn in order to see if the object would follow. The Elmendorf operator watched this turn on his radar screen and confirmed that the unknown object trailed the plane the entire time, then returned to the same position in which it had been before the turn. The FAA operator then requested a nearby commercial plane to fly past JAL 1628, but by the time it reached the target, nearly 40 minutes since Terauchi first sighted lights in the distance, the UFO had apparently disappeared. Once grounded, Terauchi filed a report with the FAA, claiming that he'd seen a UFO. He and his crew were interviewed extensively, and Terauchi made some rough sketches of the objects. When the Japanese press broke the story soon after, Terauchi was grounded by an embarrassed Japan Airlines. He spent several years at a desk job before being reinstated as a pilot. In the meantime, John Callahan, Division Chief of the Accidents and Investigations Branch of the FAA, began investigating the case. He synchronized the half-hour of radar data with all recorded radio transmissions, showing the remarkable congruence between the two sets of evidence. After presenting the data before Vice Admiral Donald Engen, Callahan was invited to present to members of the CIA, the FBI, and President Reagan's scientific study team. According to Callahan, someone from the CIA instructed everyone who attended this meeting that it never took place, and a member of the scientific study team confiscated the evidence. 
After this meeting, neither Callahan nor anyone involved in the incident heard any more about the UFO. The official FAA report concluded that the radar returns had been the result of an equipment malfunction on the radar screen that happened to coincide with the maneuvers reported by the flight crew. The origin of the visual sightings, however, was never explained. Thirteen years after retirement, Callahan reviewed the data he'd collected from the Anchorage incident and began to speak out about his involvement in the investigation. He spoke at a UFO conference in 2007, as well as the Citizens Hearing on Disclosure in 2013, and has made numerous appearances in UFO documentaries to push the US government to reveal what it knows of the UFO phenomenon. Noted UFO debunker Philip Klass is one of the few popular skeptics to have attempted a mundane explanation for the sightings of Japan Airlines 1628. Within weeks of the event, Class suggested that the two lights reported by the crew were the planets Jupiter and Mars. However, new information later revealed that the crew had frequently seen the UFO in the opposite direction of both planets. Class then proposed that the crew had seen moonlight reflected off the clouds, despite the fact that the witnesses had all reported that the clouds were below them during the sighting. Still, Class's initial explanation was published in a report released by the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal, contributing to the public perception that the entire incident had been explained. Japan Airlines Flight 1628 was not the first or only flight to encounter a UFO. Many accounts indicate that commercial airline pilots see UFOs fairly often, but do not report them for fear of professional consequences. The upheaval in Terauchi's career after the incident offers an unfortunate but telling example of these consequences, and leads us to wonder how many pilots have chosen to leave their sightings off the record in order to avoid a similar fate. Moreover, Callahan's investigation with the FAA is proof that aerial monitoring facilities do occasionally obtain evidence of UFO activity, and his experiences on the case have proven national security interest. These qualities make the Japan Airlines incident one of the strongest cases in the ufologists' arsenal, and definitive proof that the US government's official position on UFOs simply cannot be squared with the evidence. As Callahan put it, Who are you going to believe? Your lion eyes or the government?